Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and in-game trades have been a staple of the mainline Pokemon games ever since the beginning. They allow players to experience trading even if another person isn't available, and they allow you to get some Pokemon with traded benefits without actually having to trade. But not all in-game trades are created equal. Looking at you, Mindy and your Gasper the Hunter that's holding an Everstone. Today, I will be going over what I believe to be the best in-game trade in every single main series Pokemon game, with best defined as which one provides you with a Pokemon that will be most useful to you for a playthrough. Therefore, post-game trades don't matter because they don't help you in your playthrough. Your playthrough is done. Also, it doesn't matter if a Pokemon is only obtainable through an in-game trade if the Pokemon is weak. If it's not good to you for anything other than a dex entry, then it's not the best. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel since 60% of my viewers are not subscribed, which is darkness. And let's dive into what I believe to be the best in-game trade in every Pokemon game. We'll start with Generation 1, Red and Blue. We'll cover Yellow in a bit, but not right now because it actually has different in-game trades. Here are all the in-game trades for Red and Blue. Several of these Pokemon are only obtained via their in-game trade, but like I mentioned, that doesn't affect my opinion. The first one I considered naming is the Abra for the Mr. Mime as the best. The reason I thought that might be the best is because Alakazam absolutely a superior psychic type Pokemon compared to Mr. Mime. But for those players who cannot trade, I thought Mr. Mime might be superior to Kadabra. Nowadays it is, but in the Gen 1 stat system, Kadabra was the superior Pokemon due to having better special and speed. As for the rest of the trades, the Pokemon Lab ones aren't phenomenal and have the drawback of being pretty late. The Nidoran line trades are basically trading the same Pokemon for the same Pokemon, so that's not anything special. And then Lickitung and Farfetch'd are just bad Pokemon. That leaves Poliwhirl for Lola the Jinx, which is actually a pretty solid trade. Jinx has solid stats with 95 in both special and speed. Neither are stellar, but like I said, both are quite solid. What makes Jinx special is its ice typing and the fact that it gets a solid power ice stab move, Ice Punch, at level 31. That means you can use that valuable ice damage against Erika, Giovanni, and the big one, Lance, whose Dragonairs are only weak to ice because there's no dragon moves that can deal super effective damage in Gen 1. For more on that, check out my Dragon Types Then versus Now video. So Jinx can give you stab ice type offense, which is valuable and very hard to find, but it's also a psychic type, which is extremely broken in generation one. You do have to use a TM to teach it psychic, but if you do, you can use it against Koga, Bruno, and Agatha. As for the Poliwhirl you'll need for the trade, it's not super tough to get. As soon as you get the Super Rod accessible on Route 12 once you've moved Snorlax, you can catch a Poliwhirl easily by fishing on Route 10 or Celadon City. So in my opinion, Lola the Jinx is the best in-game trade Pokemon in red and blue. There are better psychic type options, namely Alakazam, but it's the psychic type in Gen 1, having two of them is probably beneficial rather than detrimental, and also the ice typing, as I said, is super valuable. But now we'll move on to yellow version, and the list of in-game trades is actually very different. In fact, only one of them gets you the same Pokemon, the Mr. Mime, but you send a different Pokemon. And yes, you can get a Dugong instead of a Seal in red and blue, but you send a totally different Pokemon. But regardless of all the differences of this new list, there is a clear winner in my eyes, Ricky the Machoke. Ricky is the best in-game trade Pokemon in yellow because yes, you are sent a Machoke, which evolves by trading and will evolve so you can get a Machamp from an in-game trade, which is incredible. To do the trade, you need a Cubone, which is found in the Pokemon Tower. It's got a low encounter rate in yellow and only found on a few floors that I'm pretty sure you can't access properly until you get the Sylph Scope, 
but it's worth it in my opinion. It means you could get a mod champ before you even have four badges and without having to worry about trading with any other real people. Like, what? <laughs> we don't need friends. Ricky the Machamp is a very strong Pokemon that you can obtain very early. So to me, that makes it clearly the best in-game trade in yellow version. Now on to generation two, gold, silver, and crystal. Now crystal has a different list of in-game trades than gold and silver, but I'm lumping these all together because my answer is the same for all three games. Here are the in-game trades for all three Johto games. And while the later game trades change for Crystal, the early game ones are mostly the same. The first is a Bellsprout for Rocky the Onyx. This is a great trade as Onyx has the type advantage over the first two gyms, the Flying Gym and Bug Gym, and then it resists all of the attacks of Whitney's Mill Tank. If you're willing to put in the work to get a Metal Coat and then trade to evolve it, it can become a reliable team member for the long haul as a Steelix. I heavily considered naming this the best in-game trade, but I think there's one that's just a bit better. Muscle the Machop. The Pokemon you send is either a Drowsy or an Abra depending on the game, but the trade is effectively the same since Drowsy and Abra are found similarly easily on the route just south of Goldenrod, and Goldenrod is where the trade happens. Muscle the Machop is fantastic because it's super helpful against Whitney. And Whitney is the toughest gym leader in Johto, according to the votes that I received for my toughest gym leader in every game video. Machop is extra helpful because the mill tank is only weak to fighting and your fighting type options are extremely limited this early in the game in a Johto playthrough. I'm pretty sure your only other option is Heracross, which is a bit of a challenge to find, and even if you get one, the only fighting move it could learn around that level is the disgustingly weak Rock Smash. As an added bonus, Muscle is female and therefore cannot be attracted by Miltank. It makes the toughest battle in the game a lot more manageable, and then if you're able to trade, you can keep using it throughout the game as a fast experience gaining Machamp, which is really strong. Also, the guy who gives you the Machop's name is Mike. Ha, <laughs> clearly someone very benevolent and trustful. Trustworthy, trustworthy. So Muscle the Machop is the best in-game trade in Gen 2, but Rocky the Onyx is a close second, and I actually recommend using both of them. In my first ever playthrough of Gen 2, which I did here on my channel, I used both of them on my team, and they were awesome. Now on to Generation 3, starting with the Hoenn games Ruby and Sapphire, and oh my god, they had nothing. This is the entire in-game trade list for Ruby and Sapphire, clearly, far shorter than the previous generations. Of these three trades, the best is the Makuhita named Makit. Makit? Make it? I don't know. The Makuhita is the only useful Pokemon you can receive. The Skitty and Corsola come way too late in the game and are also just not very good Pokemon. To be fair, these in-game trades are clearly intended to be used as contest Pokemon. They all come with one of their contest stats boosted really high. However, that's not the ranking system I'm using for this video. I care about how good the Pokemon is on a playthrough team, and Skitty and Corsola are not good, and Makuhita is actually pretty solid. Hariyama is a great team member if you don't pick Blaziken, since the fighting type is useful for a lot of the big battles, particularly the most challenging gym leader, Norman. By doing this in-game trade, you can get Makuhita earlier than otherwise and have one that will get boosted experience. Slackoth isn't super easy to find in the forest, but it certainly is findable and the trade is doable. So the Makuhita is the best in-game trade Pokemon in Ruby and Sapphire, partially because it's the only good one and partially because it's a good Pokemon. But then we move on to Emerald, and none of them are good. There are once again only three trades available before the League, the Meowth one being post-game. Horsey requires a Bagon, a Pokemon you can't catch until you have Waterfall, and eight badges, so it might as well be post-game. Plusle is a bad Pokemon, 
So all that leaves is dots the C dot as the best by default, but even then it's not great. Shiftry isn't a stellar Pokemon for a playthrough in Gen 3, due to Nuzleaf having a severely limited level up moveset, meaning you have to use TMs for it to be effective and TMs broke in this game. Also, Shiftry's best attacking stat is its physical attack and grass and dark moves are all special in Gen 3. It's not god awful, but in my opinion, there are better grass and or dark type options. And also, I don't know if it's worth trading away a Ralts for. Gardevoir is pretty good and Ralts isn't that easy to find. I don't know if I recommend this trade, but I certainly recommend it more than all of the other ones. Next up is Fire Red and Leaf Green, whose list of in-game trades is almost identical to Red and Blue's. So my answer is the same, sort of. This is the list of all of them, and at the top you'll notice is Abra for Mr. Mime once again. If you recall, I considered this as the best trade in Red and Blue, in order to consider players who cannot trade, since Alakazam is better than Mr. Mime, but I thought Mr. Mime might be better than Kadabra. In Gen 1, Mr. Mime was not better than Kadabra, but in Gen 3, it absolutely is. Due to the stat system change, Mr. Mime now has a much better base stat total than Kadabra. So if you want a strong, fast psychic type and can't get Alakazam, this trade is the way to go. As an added bonus, Mimey in the Mr. Mime has a timid nature, which lowers its not as useful physical attack stat and boosts its speed stat. That's a great nature for a Mr. Mime. However, if you can trade and can get an Alakazam, Alakazam is strictly better than Mr. Mime in most every way. So in that case, the best trade is the same one as before, Poliwhirl for Jinx, but this time the Jinx is named Zinx. This Jinx is the best for the same reasons as before. The ice type stab is very helpful and hard to find in Kanto, and it can be used as a psychic type Pokemon if you use the TM, and even after all of the nerfs the psychic type got in Gen 2, it's still really good in Gen 3 due to the lack of strong bug types, the singular ghost type that is weak to psychic, and the complete absence of dark types. So even if you can get Alakazam, again, you might still consider using Jinx too. So essentially, if you have access to Alakazam, you should use it and then supplement it with Jinx. However, if you don't have access to Alakazam, use Mr. Mime. And then also potentially supplement it with Jinx. Now on to generation four, starting with the Sinnoh games, Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum the games with the infamous Everstone Haunter trade. Obviously, that will not be the best one. Like with the Hoenn games, there are not very many trades in these games, and it's actually easy to eliminate all but one. Gaspar is, of course, terrible, and Magikarp is post-game. That leaves Cherup the Chatot and Kaza the Abra, and Abra is strictly better. Chatot only has a base stat total of 411, while the Abra can become Alakazam, which is much stronger, obviously. Even if you're not able to trade and evolve Kaza into an Alakazam, the Kadabra form of Kaza is still useful to you. Yes, it has a lower base stat total than Chatot, but it's got 120 special attack and 100 speed, which is incredible, especially that early in the game. It's just more useful to you than a middle of the road Chatot. Also, yes, Gaspar the Hunter does have a similar base stat total to a Kadabra, but it's obtained so late in the game, by that time, what's the point? You'd want a Gengar by that time anyways. As for the Pokemon you send, which is Machop, it's super easy to find, just north of Orberg on Route 207. I'm not saying this trade is incredible, but it's not bad, and it's certainly better than the few other options. Next up is Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The in-game trade list for these games is a mix of the various trades in all three of the Gen 2 games, plus some extras. However, my answer is the same as it was for Gen 2, Muscle the Macha. I won't delve into all the reasoning because it's the same as it was in Gen 2. It's very useful against Whitney, the most challenging gym leader in the game. I should mention though that Heracross now has good fighting moves, actually getting Brick Break at level 19, which is incredible. Therefore, due to its much better stats, 
Heracross is better for the Whitney fight than Macha. However, up to this point in the game, you can only find Heracross at a maximum level of five. So you'd have to do quite a bit of grinding to catch it up to the rest of your team, since you can't find Heracross until you can headbutt trees. So if you intend to use Heracross on your team for the rest of the playthrough, I say go for it. But otherwise, just doing an easy trade for the Machop is probably easier. Now on to generation five, starting with black and white. In my opinion, none of these trades are particularly impressive. There are better water options than Basculin. Rotom and Munchlax are post-game, and so that leaves Emolga and the two grass types that the trade depends on the version. Emolga's electric typing is useful for the flying gym, but that's all it's got going for it. Its base stat total is pretty low for a fully evolved Pokemon, and the trade happens decently late in the game, around the sixth gym, the flying gym. Meanwhile, the Petalil Cottony trade is very early in the game, and you send the one found in your game in exchange for the one not in your game. These two trades are the best because they allow you to get a boosted experience grass type that can become a really solid member of your team once it evolves, Lilligant in black or Whimsicott in white. Also, they have modest natures, which is a fantastic nature for these Pokemon since they have good special attack stats. The trade isn't freaking incredibly broken or anything, but you could get a pretty solid boosted experience grass type for your squad, and that's better than the other options. Next is black two and white two, which have pretty different trades. I should mention there's some long lists of in-game trades you can do with Yancey or Curtis, but those are post game, so not going to consider them here. These are the rest of them, and the same Petalil and Cottony trade is available, just in a different location. Tangrowth growth comes too late in the game, so it's down to the Petalil Cottony trade or sending in a Molga for a Gigalith. If you are capable of training, then the Petalil Cottony trade is still the best. Gigalith is a fantastically strong Pokemon and really awesome, I love the thing, but the trade itself is kinda late and also getting a Molga is a bit tedious. You can only find it in the rustling grass, which is an annoying process. If you can trade and want to use Gigalith, I recommend just catching a Bulldore earlier in the game and evolving it immediately with the trading rather than waiting until around the sixth gym to do this in-game trade. But if you cannot trade, it's worth it for the Gigalith. It's got an adamant nature which boosts its physical attack, which is awesome, and it can be used right before the flying gym and it's just a huge base stat total Pokemon you wouldn't be able to get otherwise because it's a trade evolution. So in short, if you can trade, the Petalil Cottony trades. If you cannot, then grab the Gigalith. Now on to generation six, starting with X and Y. This is the list of all the trades and one stands out far more than the others and is the clear best. Love Disc for Steelix. Love Disc for Steelix. In the second gym town, Sillage City, you can easily find Love Disc with a 100% encounter rate using the old rod. Then you can immediately trade it for a huge base stat total Steelix. And it already comes evolved, so you don't need to worry about trade evolutions or a metal coat. Then you can immediately use the Steelix for the rock type gym, since steel and ground are both good against rock. You'll probably wanna teach it Bulldoze, doesn't really learn a whole lot of ground moves by level up, but the Bulldoze TM is in Lumio, so you can buy it as soon as you're like there. Then Steelix continues to be useful against the Electric, Fairy, and Ice Gyms, half the gyms total, including the Rock one. It blows my mind that you can send over an almost completely useless and very easy to find Love Disc in exchange for a Steelix that is very powerful, and you get it at level 20 very early in the game. This, it's crazy. This might be the most one-sided in-game trade in the entire main series. Shout out to Thumper the Steelix for just being basically a gift Pokemon. Next up is Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. The trade list is effectively the same as Ruby and Sapphire, so my answer is the same. Slackoth for Makuhita, whose name I'm still not sure how to pronounce. I think it's Makit. 
because Makuhita, but like it looks like just make it. I don't know. Now on to generation seven, starting with Sun and Moon. This is the list of trades in Sun and Moon, and for me, the trickiest call is between Machop and Bound Suite, since both are immediately useful for their immediately following trial. I thought it over though, and I'm giving this one to Bouncy the Bound Suite. The Wishy Washy trial can be challenging, and having a Steeny, which Bouncy should be before you do the trial, will help a lot. It can continue to be useful as a Zarina, especially since it has an adamant nature, boosting its great attack. Also, it comes with a Bright Powder, a very useful item, especially for frail Pokemon. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon changes the list up though. These are all the in-game traits in the Ultra games, and the choice is simple for me. Cha the Halucha. I talk about this in more detail in my best team member in every game video, but Halucha is freaking incredible in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It's got a great base stat total that's really nice to have that early, and it has super effective stab against the vast majority of the in-game battles. The fact you can get one of the best Pokemon in the game so early with the boosted experience is incredible. Next up is Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, and they totally change up the list of in-game traits from previous Kanto games. These ones are all Alola forms. These are all the in-game trades in the Let's Go games, and the list is simply the Cantonian Pokemon for the Alolan Pokemon, with a few version differences and exclusives. To me, the best contenders on this list are immediately the Dark types. As I mentioned earlier in the video, despite all the nerfs to the Psychic type in Gen 2, it remains a dominant type in Kanto playthroughs because there are no Dark types, there's only one Ghost type and it's weak to Psychic, and most of the bug types are pretty weak. Therefore, being able to get a dark type is super valuable, so the dark type Alola forms are the most valuable. Therefore, the best trade in Let's Go Pikachu is the Alolan Grimer, and the best trade in Let's Go Eevee is the Alolan Persian. I do think Alolan Muck is a bit of a better Pokemon than Persian, but they're both gonna be really useful to you especially since you can get them before you fight Sabrina. You just have to get the surfing replacement from Fuchsia and then surf to Cinnabar and find the trade guy there. An honorable mention though goes to Alolan Raticate, which is also a dark type. It's much weaker than the other two, but you can get it way earlier in the game. So I recommend tossing it on your team, at least in the interim, to deal with psychic types before you can get the better dark types. Finally is Generation 8, Sword and Shield. And I should say I will not be including the Isle of Armor, Galarian form for not Galarian form trades. Not everybody has the DLC and her location and timing and offerings are very inconsistent depending on the day. And it just didn't make sense to include them. This is the list of main game in-game trades in Sword and Shield. And of all of these, I think Snips the Togepi is the best. It has a timid nature, which is fantastic for Togekiss, and Togekiss is just an extremely powerful Pokemon that will be super useful to you. Togepi does evolve by friendship, which can be a bit annoying. However, it's gonna get boosted experience. The most efficient way to raise a Pokemon's friendship is to hand it the Soothe Bell and then level it up a lot with experience candy. If it gets boosted experience, you're gonna be able to evolve that Togepi even faster. As for the Toxel you have to provide, you could send the one you got from the daycare, but also it's not too tough to find a wild one in the wild area or on Route 7. So there we have it. Those are what I believe to be the best in-game trades in every main series Pokemon game. Happy trading, but make sure you don't level them up too fast and make it so they don't listen to what you have to say. Thank you so much for listening to what I have to say and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of the fluctuating nature of the YouTube ad business. If you can help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, which I highly recommend, click somewhere here on the screen. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.